Hello, Dart people. We are doing the Dart language tour. We're in the function section, uh, testing functions for equality and maybe return values because it's a really small section. Okay, I don't know exactly why this is called out as a thing that, that we should take note of, that, that we should remember as being important. Um, they don't really give the reason behind that. Um, so let's just go through it and, and hopefully we'll, we'll learn something along the way um, when things are equal and when they're not. Okay, so here's an example of testing top-level functions, static methods, and instance methods for equality. There is our top-level function. Here's our class. We have a static or class method, and then we have an instance method there. The only thing that makes uh, this a class method is this word static. Um, these functions, because they are wrapped inside the curly braces of a class, it makes them methods. It's just a new name it gets. Okay, we haven't talked about classes yet per se. Uh, those are way down here. Um, but we'll get to them someday. Uh, anyways, that's all you need to know about that. Now let's go test them out. See what it looks like. Okay. All right. Here is our top level function. It means top level because it is outside of main. Um, here is our class. I guess this could also be called a top level class uh, because it is also outside of main. Okay, there's our static method and there's our instance method. They're just functions inside of a class. That's it. Okay, um, the the thing about uh, an instance method and a static method in a class um, in object-oriented programming you have this concept of uh, a class which is like a blueprint for building something um, A, the letter A is not very descriptive as to what that thing could be um, so it's, it's more academic in this sense like sometimes you can it's better to visualize like a, a real object in object-oriented programming. Um, but um, think of it like a.bar refers to the class method versus a is uh, lowercase a. If you say like new a, um, and that's old notation, which is fine. Um, and then you say that instance uh, dot baz, okay, that refers to this function here or this method okay so that's that's how that's kind of used all right let's get into our entry point of the program the main function uh, we have a property here actually it's not a property it's it's not inside of a class now we have just declared a variable called x that can hold uh, anything of type function Okay, so we can't we can't um, assign an integer to x. It doesn't allow that because it's expecting a function. Okay, type int can't be assigned to a variable of type function. All right, so let's first compare the top level functions. Um, inside this x bucket, if we dump in foo, which is a top level function that does nothing. Okay, nothing's happening here. Then um, this word foo here refers to well, what's going on here um, but x also refers to that that general like logic like what's going on there um, this says assert if we run it uh, we won't see anything over here like that uh, if we change it to a print now it's asking the question is foo equal to uh, x and it'll print the result and it'll say that's true. Okay. So um, the way I like to think about this, uh, let's see if I can do this. So if I have, let's say, a bucket here and another bucket here, uh, this first bucket is called foo. All right, uh, this one is called X. Um, and then somewhere inside our program, we have a bunch of uh, logic, okay? 
So this is just like um, bum 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 bum, like something happens. All right, so somewhere in our program, the logic is stored, um, and foo. When we declared it up here, you know, right now there's no logic, right? So it's like it's doing nothing. Like these these lines represent doing nothing. Maybe return null. Um, it points to this 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 space in our machine that says, hey, this is what foo represents. Foo is just the name for this logic in curly braces. Um, and it also contains metadata that it should return void. Um, <clears throat> or null, I guess. Uh, and simply by assigning foo to x, really what we're doing is we're saying, well, foo only represents all this stuff right here. So when you assign foo to x, what you're really doing is just saying x equals that stuff. They, they point to the same thing. So now when you say print is foo equal to x, yeah, it's the exact same thing. It's just like a different name for the same logic. Okay, so that's, that's what that's doing. Okay, how do I, there we go, boom. Now let's go look at the static methods. <clears throat> so we have x is equal to a dot bar. Um, I wanna do something with it too. I wanna print a dot bar and just show you that this is, when you print the reference to a function and you don't actually call it, um, that is a, a closure. Okay, I'm gonna change this back to an assert so that we don't see that true anymore there. Um, so the first thing we're gonna see printed here is this closure, a bar. Okay, this is the name of the method on that class. So this is how that closure is defined. Okay, so now x is equal to the, um, the function itself. Um, if I go back to like that drawing I had where I had um, this thing here, it has some logic in it, like it's doing something, and then we had uh, a bucket. So this is like a variable foo originally. <clears throat> um, yeah, we had foo, right? Okay, and what they did is it, it pointed to the logic that was defined. Um, <clears throat> so this, yeah, I remember what I was gonna say. So this thing right here, all of this, these are like the instructions of what to do. If you said, what does food do? You would say it does this. Now, whenever you have a process and um, you know you have like input and then you have output, okay? So whatever you put into the function, let's say like it, if it takes parameters, um, it does a process and then it returns something. So this is like the return type void would be over here. Okay, something like that. Um, and this is your arguments that you pass. You only get the return type, uh, whatever it is, and, and, and the value itself when you invoke the function, when you call it. Um, when I say print a dot bar, that is just the closure. What that's, what that's really doing is just it's printing the representation itself, this thing, okay? Not this thing. All right, that's, that's what I wanna drive home. Okay, so now we're gonna ask ourselves, is a dot bar equal to x? Okay, well, let's print it. Okay, and it's telling us that that's true. Um, let's go ahead and just print x. So we should get this twice. It should be the exact same thing, and it is. Okay. Um, 
So just like earlier where we had that bucket and the two variables pointing to the same representation, that, that also applies here. That's what's happening. Okay. Uh, now let's look at instance methods. I'm going to run this just to clear that out. Um, so we have a variable v. It's an instance of a. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and draw this too. So let's say we have uh, an instance of A. So here's our class A. Um, and this is the object that we produce, the little instance. And let's say this is an object we produce. It's an instance. This one was V, right? Okay. And this one was W. All right, now we're going to say that y, which is a variable, uh, is equal to w. Okay, so we're creating a little bucket. And these are kind of like little buckets as well, I guess, right? Um, somewhere over here, we have a bucket, and we're going to call that y. Let's go a little lower right there. Okay, there's our bucket y. Um, and it's equal to W. So this W, I could draw it the same way if I really wanted to. I could say, all right, let's show W as a bucket because it's a variable like that. Um, and instead of having W in here, um, what could we could have is that, well, really, this object representation, this, this square, um, is inside of that. Likewise, it's also inside of that because we've assigned it, okay? So it should be the same thing. So if x, which we haven't reassigned, x is, okay, sorry. <laughs> we are reassigning x. So earlier it was a.bar, but now we're moving on to the instance methods. Um, so we have this other bucket called x, okay? And it is going to be assigned w.baz. So within this bucket, it houses this thing. Um, it has an instance method called baz. Okay, so there is, it has like different kinds of shapes. I don't know. I mean, you could think of it as like a, um, like some sort of object that's kind of hanging on all right, and this is, um, I don't know how to make that smaller. But anyways, this thing right here, this is like w.baz. Maybe I can just like spell it like this. B, A, Z, baz, okay. Um, and x is equal to that w dot baz. Okay. Now, um, yeah. So this whole thing here is going down into there. All right. Now, because x is equal to w dot baz. If we say y dot baz, see y is is a variable that represents w. It, in my mind, those those things are going to be the same, and that's why uh, whenever we print this, these closures refer to the same instance, so they're equal. So this should be true. Okay, so x refers to w dot baz as a whole, and y refers to w. So if you say um, y dot baz, it's going to be the same thing as w dot baz or x itself. Um, so we could also print w dot baz is equal to y dot baz. Okay, so these should be true because w dot baz is x as defined on line 23. Right, okay. 
And then um, finally, let me change these back to asserts. Uh, these closures refer to different instances, so they're unequal. Um, and that's because V, okay, V is a different instance of the A class. Okay, so these are both of type A, right? They come from the A blueprint or the A class, but they're different instances. So um, uh, from an object perspective, I mean, I don't even know that you have to say dot baz. You can just compare the objects themselves. This should also run without error because when you print, um, these two things, we're saying that V is not equal to W, okay? Um, because they're two different objects. Um, they're the same type of object, but two widgets that come off an assembly line made by the same blueprint, they are, they are not equal because they, they are their, their own, they have their own identity at that point. Okay. Um, so that applies to the object itself. It applies to the um, properties and the uh, methods on that object as well. So if I run this, this should also be true. And that is because uh, due to the virtue of these things being separate from the beginning. Okay. Um, that is all that means. Again, I'm not really sure why we're testing functions for equality but we are. Uh, the important thing, like the thing that I learned about uh, whenever I was learning Ruby is about um, objects uh, not being equal sometimes based on their object ID. I don't know. They're both gonna have the same runtime type. What is hash code? Do they have a different hash code? What is? The getter hash code isn't defined for type A. But it is for this one. What did I just do? Okay, I typed the whole thing out and that's why. Hash capital C code. Uh, let's find out if this is equal. Okay, so those things aren't equal. Let's just print the hash codes themselves. Okay, print uh, W dot hash code. I'm just going to press enter and let it autocomplete so I don't make that same mistake. Okay, so they have different hash codes. Um, the hash code for this object. A hash code is a single integer which represents the state of the object that affects operator equal comparisons. Huh. Okay, it looks like we found the right thing. Um, in Ruby, I think they have an uh, object ID Yeah, um, they're not actually showing us some of the things. I mean, because obviously it, it changes the hash wood. Um, but that's how you do object comparison in Ruby. All right, all objects have hash codes. The default hash code implemented by object represents only the identity of the object the same way as the default operator equal sign or double equals. Implementation only considers objects equal if they are identical identity hash code, okay. It's overwritten, blah, blah, blah. Um, okay, the hash code for an object should only change if the object changes in, any, in a way that affects equality. Okay. So each time you have like a new hash code, a new instance of something, it creates more memory in your program. Um, if you can spot instances where you should or where you can use the same object um, which I think is why um, in Flutter for example if you can find a way to use const instead of a variable or something then then do that because I think it's going to give you it's going to reuse that same um, you know block of memory in your program and not have to uh, create new stuff 
Okay, um, I kind of want to, now that we've discovered this hash code thing, go look at this. So y.baz.hashcode. So this is going to be um, the instance on the same thing. Actually, you know what? So w was an instance of a, we assigned w to y. We did that there. Um, let's just see if y and w have the same hash code. So let's print y dot hash code and let's print w dot hash code. Okay, these are our first print statements so they should show up true, true um, have the same value I think. Yeah, so look at that. Um, so earlier when we showed our variable stuff here, um, representing the same object um, so that, that's why that's why they have the same hash code alright so that's pretty cool right okay return values let's figure this one out all functions return a value let's uh, get rid of this have our entry point there we go run it. You can run an empty program. It doesn't do anything. It returns null. Um, it says all functions return a value. If no return value is specified, the statement return null semicolon is implicitly appended to the function body. Okay. So let's do this. We don't have a main program. So let's say void main What am I doing? Here we go. Let's put this inside our main program. Okay, and format it. Good. We have defined a function. Uh, it doesn't have a return type, but we're saying that all functions return a value. If no return value is specified, return null is implicitly appended. Okay. Now, how do you think things are appended? Uh, usually I think of things are append appended after after something. So if I wanted to append something to this function body, I would do it right here. Does it really do that? Is that the implicit bit? Dead code. Okay. Does it actually happen here? Is that what's implicit? Is it not allowed to because it's not on um, a new line anymore? Right? Is that what it's doing? Okay. I think that's what it means. So the function body is anything Jesus. Um, anything between these curly braces. Anything between these curly braces is, is the function body. So if nothing's here, um, what does it say? If no return value is specified, the statement return null is it implicitly appended to the function body. So you could even have something like um, Let's say bar x equals five. Okay. If even if even if it's all all this function does is like assign a variable and it doesn't print or do anything with it, this should still be true. Like it should still assert that when you invoke foo, that it it um, is equal to null. Um, is that the case? Let's print it so we can see. It's true. Okay. Um, because the way I read this, if no return value is specified, okay, we didn't return anything, we didn't say return x, no return value was specified. The statement return null, just like this, with that semicolon, is implicitly appended to the function body. This is the function body, everything in between these curly braces. So it's appended. Okay, still true. 
That, I think, is what actually happens. You can be pretty about it and put it on a new line. Um, but you can do that too. And that's a literal, literal appending of return null semicolon. Okay, so just remember that. Um, I think that's that's what we wanted to learn today. Okay, so that is it for functions in the Dart language tour. Uh, next time we will be getting started on operators. All right, see you then.